Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to my kitchen. I'm Lauren, you're watching a Valentine's. And today I am taking you through how I make my fresh homemade bread. And I'm sharing with you five ways that I have improved my bread recipe for lighter, fluffier, better texture bread. So I thought this would be a good video to make because when I first started making bread, it worked and it tasted good, but it was dense and it wasn't that really fluffy texture that you get in some of the really soft uh, grocery store bread that you get. So over the last couple months, I have set out to really improve my recipe and I really have, which is so exciting. And I wanted to do this so that we would, you know, eat my homemade bread more, look forward to having it with sandwiches and with meals, uh, but also because um, I would like to look into doing a weekly bread CSA with my uh, local neighborhood. Some folks who shop my flowers and my roadside stand have expressed interest in that. So, of course, the other benefits of making your own bread are uh, that there's no preservatives, uh, you can control the ingredients. So uh, let's start, I'm gonna take you through the whole recipe and I'll start with tip number one. And tip number one is to use bread flour. So it's a really simple switch from all purpose flour that will greatly increase the fluffiness and the texture of your bread. So I've got two brands here, just depending on what I can find. Like this is from Walmart. And then this King Arthur uh, brand is also very popular. You can find this in a lot of grocery stores. Um, the big difference between bread flour versus all-purpose flour or other types of flour is that there is increased um, proteins in the bread flour, which helps form the gluten strands. And of course, gluten is what is responsible for that spongy, um, elastic uh, texture and great rise on the bread. Um, so, you know, some of you might think this seems like a no-brainer, but there's a lot of recipes out there on the internet that call for all-purpose flour. Um, many of the ones that I found when I first started making homemade bread. So, just by changing this one ingredient, you're going to uh, really, really improve uh, your recipe. So, what I like to do it is I like to start with lukewarm water. And I'm going to use this to activate my yeast. And I'm going to add to it two tablespoons of granulated sugar uh, to feed the yeast. This is what I like to do for my recipe. Some people don't add sugar, but I like it. And I just stir it in until it starts to dissolve a little bit. A note about the water. I take my cup of water and I microwave it for about 30 seconds. You want the water to be lukewarm, not hot, because hot will kill the yeast. Um, sources that I've looked at have said uh, between 100 to 115 is about as high as you want to go. Uh, I did have a thermometer, and I did check this right before I started filming, and it was right around 100 degrees. But I've made bread for a long time without a thermometer. Just, just make sure it's lukewarm. <laughs> don't make, don't uh, do it too hot. And then what I like to do is pour it directly into my mixing bowl. Uh, I wanted to also note that this recipe will work whether you're kneading by hand or doing a hand mixer. I have done it both ways many, many times. So now with my lukewarm water, one cup, as well as uh, two tablespoons of granulated sugar in there, I'm gonna add one packet of active dry yeast. Um, if you are using yeast in the jar, one packet is approximately one quarter of an ounce if you're doing it by weight, or it's two and a quarter teaspoons. It says this on the packet. <laughs> okay. okay, I have my packet open. Mm -hmm. it smells like yeast, and I'm just going to sprinkle it into the sugar water. And then I'm just going to give it about five minutes, and we do this to Make sure that the, the yeast in this packet is alive. After about five minutes, you'll see the yeast getting bubbly and foamy, and that's how we know that it is in fact alive, and then we're ready to proceed with the rest of the recipe. So 
So after just a few minutes, our yeast is foamy and bubbly so that we know that it is good to go. And we're gonna proceed with adding our bread flour. And I do three cups of flour for this recipe. And this recipe will make one loaf. It's three cups plus or minus. You always want to keep a little flour on hand, you know, always varies about a quarter of a cup or so, just depending on the humidity and some other factors. So I start by adding about a cup and a half of the three cups, and then I'm using my dough hook here. I used to start with the paddle and then change the dough hook, but I realize there's no reason to get two uh, pieces of equipment dirty. Uh, the, it will all eventually come together just using the dough hook. And I just mix it on uh, the first speed till it starts to come together. And then I'll prepare more of my flour. So next, I'm going to add another half cup of flour. So we're up to two cups of flour. And this leads me to my second tip for getting lighter, fluffier bread, and that is to add fat. In this case, I am adding two uh, tablespoons of uh, warmed butter, or I should say room temperature butter. I had my butter uh, out, but my husband put it back in the fridge, so I ended up having to to microwave this. The fat really helps to fluff up the bread, helps with the molecular structure, really good. Now at this point, I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of salt too for flavor. Just another side tip is don't add your salt at the beginning when the yeast is activating before you've added other ingredients because that will really, um, it can slow the growth of the yeast. So I'm just gonna start this again to get it incorporated just on the first speed for now, just to, just to stir. And then I'll prepare my last and final cup of flour to go into this recipe. And we'll add in the third cup of flour. We'll lock down the mixer and now we'll put it on the second speed. So see what I mean about how it will come together as a, as a ball. You guys just watch that happen. Um, what I'm going to do now is I just add, I want to get the right uh, moisturize, more moisture level here. So I just add a tiny bit more flour until there's no more sticking to the sides and the bottom. Just enough to accomplish that because you don't want to over flour it. So that's what I'm going to do. We're on speed of two. And there we go. I've added just enough flour so that there's no longer any dough sticking to the bottom and the side. And this leads me to my third tip, which is to increase your kneading time. So this is gonna help form all those glutens and help create all that elasticity. It's really the kneading that is needed to create those long strands of gluten. So I finally got a KitchenAid mixer, guys. I just got this for my birthday. It is a, um, an expensive investment, but you can use any stand mixer um, and you can also just knead by hand. So what I'm gonna recommend is if you knead by hand, I would knead this bread for at least 12 minutes, 10 to 12 minutes. For my stand mixer, I've read different things online. What I have found is that six minutes is perfect for me. Uh, the stand mixer can do the work a lot faster, of course, than doing it by hand. But sometimes I still do it by hand because it's nice to have that, that feel um, and to do it yourself. So what I'm gonna do is put this on a speed of, well, first I'll mention, um, there is such a thing as over 
kneading, which can cause the dough to break down. I have never gotten there yet. I haven't um, experienced that, but you know, just a word of caution. I I've never, like I say, it's never happened to me. Six minutes has always been good for me. So now what I'm gonna do is set it back on a speed of two and set my kitchen timer for six minutes. Okay, folks, our six minutes of me time is up. So we're just gonna pull the dough off the hook. Awesome. Pull it out. Still had a little bit sticking to the bottom. Come on there. So I do like to knead it by hand just a few times to, uh, I never want to like forget what it should feel like or get too far from, you know, the texture that we're looking for. Oh, I never want to rely on the machine all the time and then forget how it's supposed to feel by hand. Interestingly enough, the dough does still feel a little wet, but I've added a little bit more flour, so that'll take care of it, but it just feels so, um, silky smooth right now, guys. So we've got our lovely ball of dough here, and now it's time to allow the bread to have its first rise. I have a bowl here with about a tablespoon of oil in the bottom. So I'm gonna put it face down first, coat the ball with oil, then I'm gonna pick it up, flip it over, and let the other side get oiled as well. And then it's just going to hang out in here and for its first rise, which leads me to my next tip. So my next tip for lighter, fluffier homemade bread is to allow for some heat and humidity during the rise process. And for that, I actually put my bread on a seedling heat mat. <laughs> so if you guys are gardeners, a lot of you have these. They're cheap on Amazon. But basically, I started using one because I read online that commercial bakers use proofing boxes that create heat and humidity that's just perfect for bread to rise. And I thought, well, I don't have one of those, but I have these seedling heat mats. And they kind of work great because other than like a heat mat for your, that you would use for your body, they only raise about 10, 15 degrees above the, the room temperature. So it's just perfect. So you're not trying to cook it, you're just trying to add a little bit of heat. So what I'll do is put the bowl right on here or several bowls if I'm making a couple loaves at a time. And then I put plastic wrap on the top. Now, if you don't wanna use plastic wrap, you can also use a damp, uh, rag, like a damp kitchen cloth, uh, but this is what's going to help to trap in some of the humidity. Um, and so at this point, we allow the bread to, to rise for an hour. If you don't want to use a ceiling heat mat, just place it in a warm spot. I didn't really have, have that, and I, ha I have like tons of these ceiling mats only up from gardening, so it was a quick win for me. But uh, anyway, guys, um, I'm gonna set the timer for one hour, and when we come back, our dough should be much larger than it was. It's just one hour later, and you can see how much larger <laughs> our ball of dough is now. And I hope you can see from the previous shot all of the um, wonderful uh, humidity that was kept in there. So next thing that we're going to do is just punch down our dough and then we're going to form it into uh, the loaf, loaf, the loaf shape for the next rise which will take place inside the loaf pan. So for that I just like to put it into a log pinch the bottom, put a little too much oil on this, and then fold the sides under, 
kind of catch them under two. And yeah, you just kind of want it to be universe as a, I don't know, symmetrical as possible. And then nestle it down into your loaf pan. Let me do a little more smoothing out here. There we go. And so next, it will rise in here one more time for about 30 minutes. I'm gonna place it back on the seedling mat and set my timer for 30 minutes. And at that point, we can also um, preheat the oven. I'll just go ahead and preheat the oven. And I am gonna put my wrap back on top of it because it's nice and oily, so it shouldn't stick at all. So 30 minutes for the second rise, then we can bake. Just 30 minutes later, check out how fluffy our bread is and how much it's risen on the second rise. Wow, <laughs> it smells so wonderful. So I like to score it just straight down the middle. I just try to use a sharp knife for that. There we go. And now it's gonna bake in the oven that was preheated to 400 degrees for about 40 minutes. Mm. Here it goes. Guys, our Hang bread up. is done. I'm just gonna take it out. And then I'm going to let this cool before I slice it, but I want to share with you my last and final tip which actually has to do with storing the bread, which is to use a bread box. So fresh bread never lasts quite as long as store-bought bread. That's because it's all natural and we don't use any of those yucky preservatives, but storing in a bread box helps the bread re retain its humidity and moisture while also letting some air out. It's much better than storing it in a plastic bag, which tends to uh, ruin the crust and storing it in the fridge makes it more dense and uh, I don't like that. I know some people do but I've tried it and it's never really worked for me so I'll show you the bread box that I got on Amazon um, and it's a bamboo bread box and it's been a game changer. Uh, so anyway, um, I hope these tips were helpful. Stay tuned to the end. I'll show you slicing the bread and the box that I store it in but before I wrap up, I just wanted to say thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys on the next video.